Yeah, welcome everybody. Um, we have the great pleasure of having two gentlemen here on the couch who came all the way from Chicago. Two of the yeah key figures of a musical movement that I guess has been popping up on a lot of people's radars in the last two years, but they've been around forever doing their thing since the yeah early 90s really, so there's a, a long story to tell. So yeah, give them a big, big round of applause. That's so Red Bull. Thank you, thank you. So you're both from Chicago, like born, always been there? Yep. Where exactly from? Well, the south suburbs, you know. Can't front, can't lie, but you know, where we where we live at, I guarantee you, it's like rougher than like in the city. <laughs> for real. Yeah. So maybe for all of us who haven't been to Chicago, like I've been there once, but don't know too much about it. So maybe could you fill us in about this whole South Side thing, like what it's like there, what's the difference to the West Side? That's not an East Side, right? So oh, that's what like the geography of the city, huh? Well, I mean, we got a big lake, so the east side is predominantly the south side still. So, yeah, you got the whole south side, which is, I want to start, say, starts at 127. That's 127 block to to zero when you go up in the numbers. And um, that goes all the way east to the lake. Um, I don't even know what 100 block that is. That's pretty far, some miles that stretch all the way from zero all the way east. And then the west side is from downtown. <sighs> more hundred blocks all the way to the west side so and like the south side pretty much um we had most most of the projects on the south side like the, the project buildings and uh man a lot of great music and a lot of great art and just man imagination and everything coming to being from just hard circumstances came out of man a real rough area so you said before you got into djing rashad you got into djing in like 92 um, so what kind of music were you playing back then? Like uh, house? We was playing old school house, more like the track records, uh, Dance Mania, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, and a lot of techno. Te techno as in like the stuff from Detroit that came out of Detroit and like that, that type techno of stuff? Techno from Detroit and overseas as well. Okay. So like overseas, what kind of stuff? Like Speedy J, Pullover. Um, yeah, Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk. Should we play the music that we got for yeah, you? Yeah, we could we could do that later. I was just curious, like how I mean, how did you get exposed to that music? Like, was that like was that on the radio? Was that like stuff you picked up? Whatever, like was that a record shop thing? Was that like people playing the stuff in their cars? Or like how did it you was, first get in touch with that with that type of music? It was like the, the clubs that we was going to when we were kids. Like um, it was a club called Jubilation, right? Yeah, Jubilation. Jubilation was like a teen club for like sixth grade to yeah to high school. Believe it or not, and uh, they kicked the, like us out at eleven, and the party continued to two for the older guys, you know. So we used to get a taste of the the nightlife when we was young, and uh, we heard it, and we just went crazy for it. Okay, so was the, was the was the DJing first, or were you like into dancing first? Or? Dancing was first, but uh, I started doing both at like seventh grade. I started DJing. Um, I kind of stopped dancing for a minute, and I wanted to focus more on DJing and. Uh, at that time, I was just kind of like playing around with it. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I further got into it, and uh, yeah, it just took off from there. How about you? Uh, I've been dancing all my life, so like me and him, it's like when we met, we was like the same spirit. Like so, it was like some divine or something, you know? It was crazy. So like by the time we got to meet each other officially in like '95 in uh, high school, it was like. We already seen each other like from parties and stuff, and then I got with him. He was already like had a drum machine, turntables at the house. I give him a call. He like, man, I'm over here mixing, man. You should come through. I'm like, damn, I'm at work. <laughs> you know, I'm working. I'm a young dude working. So I'm like, man, this dude really got equipment. Like, wow, you know, I got I got to get up with him ASAP. What kind of equipment are we talking about? Like drum machine? What kind of what kind of shit did you have like that? Uh, at that time, I had a Doctor Rhythm uh, six sixty. And uh, I had I had 112 at this time, 112 Technique 100, and uh, a BD12 Gemini, if y'all remember that <laughs> back in the day. So, yeah, allowance money. I don't forget the Gemini mixer, bro. Oh, the mixer, with the sample, on, with it. The sample on it. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe you could play some of the records that you played back then and, like, the stuff that influenced at that time. And we're talking, like, early, early 90s, right? Like, 92, 93, yeah, that kind of thing. definitely. Do y'all know this song? What's that for the people who don't know? Fast Eddie. 
Hip House. Hip House. Yo, party people, get ready for this. This is a serious song that can't be missed. It's not hip hop or hop hip, it's hip house. Get ready, cause I'm about to turn it out. Let the ass take control of your mind, your body, your soul. One, two, three, four. It's just like a, a little compilation we put together, the stuff we grew up to, like influential stuff, and it's just what we was listening to that had us really on the dance started floor. It too. Yeah. Any of y'all know what this is right here? Yeah. 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 Like, this was one of the hits right here back in the day. Yeah, Steve Poindexter. crazy to this back in the day and we were shorties listening to this so we was like what is this just to hear just to hear cursing on the record constantly it was insane and we still listen to stuff like this too it's more like the, the club 909 stuff has anybody heard this? This track right here, Lil Lewis video class, is like, this is a super classic right here, because this was like the beginning of like a lot of crews coming together and like dancing against each other. And it wasn't even footwork back then. It was like animation. Like, it, it's hard for me to explain it. Like, people kind of like, like breaking, like mixed with some, oh, crazy. <laughs> I can't describe it. Yeah, it was it, little. It didn't have a name for it back then. Oh, yeah, y'all know yeah, that. Y'all already know what this is. <laughs> Definitely a big hit. What's that again? Crystal Waters, Gypsy Woman. Right here is uh, Liddell Townsend. Nunu. Yeah, Nunu. Also big, too. Real big. Big box froze, and everybody was coming out with the curls and all that. If y'all could listen to it, like, pretty much like the drums and, like, a lot of these tracks were, like, similar at, at, all at this time. It's time for the percolator. It's time oh, yes. for the percolator. This would change the it's game for us. Yeah. Chicago right that changed the game. If, if y'all just couldn't hear the it's difference the in, when we were playing before it's to this, the like, percolator. this was the one that made everybody go crazy. Percolator. It was just a, a coffee pot on the tape. It's time for the a coffee pot it's on the tape. We'll percolate on that. And it made everybody go crazy. It's time for the percolator. It was just like a... How many tracks on that tape? 
Four, it's time for the four tracks. And it's you you can keep this one on repeat, but everyone was a banger. Percolator. Just that sound right there. People would go crazy, like fighting and shit, all kind of stuff, man. Like for real though. Crying, I seen people crying at this shit. Crazy, crazy. No, seriously. It's time. Yeah, it was a dance, show the dance. That's the percolator right there. That's the west. That's the east side percolator. That's the west side right here. Just do this. <laughs> All right. This was also a hit right after percolator. Us, everybody. That's the one girls used to just pop. Mo Cashman, he was like running it back then. Cashman was the man, he still is the man. Yeah. Um, that's one of my idols right there. Uh, so we definitely had to let y'all hear this if y'all haven't heard it before. And it's crazy because he's like from our part of the neighborhood. Like we always thought these guys were from some, yeah, we thought they were from somewhere deep in the city or something. They, they from the suburbs like us. Stayed in my same building. I didn't, I didn't know it till he moved out. Crazy. Upstairs, y'all. Everybody stayed in his apartment complex. No luck. Y'all remember this one? Yeah, this was huge. Like, I mean, back in these days right here, I, I can't even explain. It was just people were making good music. They were feeling good, making good tracks. For real. Nightcrawlers, of course, push the feeling. Hey, this is all the stuff we was listening to that really made us want to DJ. Like, we were still kids right here. I think Rashad probably was DJing around this time, though. Yeah, but I wasn't producing at this time, though. I was just, like, playing records. Yeah, these this the Out Here Brothers. They actually from around our neighborhood, too. It's crazy. And we never knew that till years later. So, right there, that was like, what, what's that, what? That was like... 89? Nah, 96. No, 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 no. I mean, as far as like where we went to. Oh, yeah, that's like from 84, 86, my fault. Right, 86 to like 90, to what, like 92? 90, 93. 93? 92. Yeah. So, we going to step it up a little bit. Some Paul Johnson after everything we just played. So, it's like 93, 94. And now you can hear another change in the tracks. Stuff started to get way more simple. A lot of, a lot of hooks and vocals, too. Little four bars. Yeah. Martin, Fire Alarm, this crazy. All these tracks, this one we was like getting it in, like 
getting ready to become like real dancers right here when these tracks is out. This is like the testers, the floor testers right here. Yeah, we wasn't dancing hardcore right now. Not yet. We'll still play it when we got on, but yeah, this this like the early stuff, bro. Skating ring. Everybody used to like party at the skating rinks back in them days, early 90s. And yeah, till now almost. Yeah, they still party at the skating rinks in Chicago. Pop it! Party people! Pop it! Party people! Pop it! Party people! Pop it! Pump it up! Pop it! Party like, people! This is another change in the, in the program and the sequence and right here. DJ Funk, like another Chicago legend from the West Side. Change in the program, what's the change? Yeah, I mean, you probably can't tell, but like, yeah, play, go back to like, yeah, like from this, it's more like, like rhythms. Then when we get to pump it, it's just drums, back to just drums, and it's kind of faster too. Like, uh, yeah, it starts more up. words, more words in the tracks at this time, you know what I'm saying. It just started getting a lot more simpler just to make a, a, a nice track. Oh, yeah. Then it's just the beginning of the simplicity. Move it. How could you get more simple than that? Move it. 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 The real party side of town. So they made the stink party sounding tracks. Uh, DJ Waxmaster, DJ Funk, Jammin' Gerald, and it, it was a lot of them. Tracks, yeah, man. tracks, man. They made the they made a, the clap for it to the floor with the with the bass. Like we didn't do that like that on the south side. Yeah, then come the edits like the. But the hits, I want to call it the hits, edits, with all the pump it, work it, hit it. It was like so many of them, but like this is probably our number one, so we just put this in here for y'all. Then uh, guys start using more 808s around this time too. I think it's a little bit of both, 808 and 909s at this time. Like, this track right here, I can remember, he was DJing on the radio, like a college station back in the day, and I was just a listener. And like, I had these type of tracks like this, you couldn't hear them nowhere else but the college station, so it was just, man, these guys, him, Gantman, Johnna Rush, they used to just be killing at the radio station. And I didn't know they was, as, you know, as old as me, you know, they was a little bit older, but I'm like, man, you know, they, they, they kid, we all kids, and they DJing like that, wow. So where we at, what, 94? 
Yeah, we still in the early 90s. <laughs> For real. So we'll be done by 10 p.m. more or less? Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to go through it real quick for y'all. <laughs> Don't worry. I could listen to that for like <laughs> hours. And then DJ Dion came. These guys from the low end. They from the south side Another of Chicago. Another legend for us in the idol as well, DJ Dion. This is like, what, 96? Yeah. This is like the super party anthem back in 96 right here. You couldn't go nowhere without anybody saying, uh-oh. What a hoes. <laughs> for real. And this track right here, this DJ Milton, this was Dion partnering crime. So like, we was coming up, we really wanted to feel Dion and Milton's shoes whenever that day came, you know. We like studied their music like to the T. Cause Milton, he had the more be uh, like beat tracks. Dion had the voice, so it like went hand in hand. Another Dion. Shake it. That voice again. <laughs> Shake it. Yeah. yeah that's Dion on Shake it. Shake it. Put your mama gay up. Shake it. Shake it. Put your mama gay up. Shake it. All you hoes out south, dick and balls in your mouth. Dion. All you hoes all you hoes up north, you can suck it back and forth. All you hoes out east, put my dick between your teeth. All you hoes out south, that's crazy, right? This is what made us. This what made us. These are our first records we started playing at parties, right here. After 96, it come the word juke right here. Juke. Like uh, DJ Poncho, Gant Man, they put the word on the map and they came out with an album called Let Me See You Juke. Yeah, but I think, all right, yeah. Before, before, we get, before we get into that real quick maybe, like if you listen to the stuff, especially like sitting in front of a speaker like that, I and mean, it makes perfect sense. There's like a pretty unbroken lineage from even from like whatever the music box, Frankie Knuckles, era type house music to whatever the cashmere stuff to like the ghetto house stuff later on but how did that happen i mean the, the stuff getting you know simpler and faster was that like pressure from the dancers or anything or how i mean how did that happen do you have an explanation for that yeah we finna break that down right now um uh, that's what dance mania pretty much closed down yeah, it was, um, yeah coming to a close it's really our fault <laughs> <laughs> truthfully uh Everybody that was on Dance Mania Records, when it closed down, they just stopped DJing. I'm talking Dion, Milton, Sluggo, Sluggo PJ, Waxmaster, uh, Wax DJ Funk, too. Um, everybody just left. So, as far uh, as Chicago goes. As far though. as Chicago goes. They weren't doing no parties. Uh, they stopped making music, and it just left the scene completely. So that left me, this guy, DJ Clint, our people, Tracks, man, the game, man, just out there. So we was like, fuck it, we're going to take over. But we didn't know we was gonna get this far, you know. We was just like far yeah, as Chicago, just holding it down for the for our city, for the city, you know, and far as you know, yeah. So that's what happened. Where did you play at that time? With like, what were the clubs you played at, or the kind of parties you played at? Uh, like Dalton Expo, Cavallini's yeah, Club, like, like teen events, uh, like sixteen, fifteen, and up, or something like that. You get in with a high school ID. You had to be like a sophomore, or higher to get into parties. You couldn't be older than twenty one to get in, stuff like that. Also, like on the low end too, Fifty First, the Elks. Oh yeah, we used to be in all Saint the projects. Elizabeth, all the projects, we were everywhere. So yeah, yeah. Because at the same time, we was in a dance group called House of Maddox, which was from the low end of Chicago. And uh, man, they actually gave us our first break with DJing at the biggest parties in the city. So it's like a blessing. Like that was our little plan, though, to get in with dancing, and then yeah, we DJ and we make tracks. So what kind of places were that? Like how many people would come there? Oh shit. Uh, Dalton Expo is like yeah, um, it's like four thousand, four thousand people every every, every Saturday week. and Friday night, yeah, for like four or five years straight. And 
were you able to like make a living off that? Like, did you get paid properly, or was it more of a fun thing back then? We was kids. We so. was kids. We didn't know the business. You know, like, yeah. But uh, we got a little something to keep our mouth shut. But we didn't care. We was more happy just to do it. It was all about the love and just having a good time, you know. So, nah, we. Sh I wish we would have kind of like focused on the money a little bit more. But nah, we didn't care. And at the same time, like the the older guys that were already established, like. They never really helped us. Like, no one ever was like, man, I see the potential in you guys. We want to help y'all out. You know, y'all want to put out a record or something. You know, they'd give us their little hints or something like that. Like, yeah, keep that under wraps or you should put that out with Dance Mania or something like that. But we didn't know Dance Mania was going to come to a close as soon as it did. So we were just getting our feet wet. And, like, we wish we could play some of our tracks from back in the day. But, unfortunately, they was on tapes. And who has a tape playing here? Nobody. So the question would be, like, who knows what a tape player is? Right, what is a cassette? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, seriously, do you have these type of tracks? Like, do you still play them out, or are they like somewhat somewhere lost on on tape? Oh, and yeah, you we never... still pl um, well, the tracks we got, we still play. Yeah, yeah, I mean, from that time. Yeah, yeah, like this stuff we got right here. But as okay. far as our original production, we have none of that. Somebody has it somewhere. They they hoard them somewhere and they keep them for safekeeping, I guess. Yeah. But they'll find us one day and, and bless us <laughs> with our own music back. <laughs> So you mentioned before that like Cashmere was living in your building and you didn't know that and you I mean you probably whatever read the name on the record and they were like oh these must be superstars and just lived around the corner so how about people like Slugo and Dion did you know them like did they kind of you know were you in touch with them or well yeah we met them through House of Maddox because they were also House of Maddox DJs so um, once we got in the group with them uh, with the dance group you know um, the president kind of like introduced us and said oh this is Dion this is, you know so us we was like kind of like nervous and shit but you know we met him and uh we had to prove our point because back then like it was no serato it was no um youtube none of that so you had to prove that you could dj on 12s you know and records you had to carry crates to records too back then so uh we had to show them what we was about man and uh they get shot and we, we showed them so what was the relation like? Was it more of a competition type of thing? Like, oh, these kids want to take my spot? Or was it more like, okay, I see some passion talent there. Let me let me maybe help these guys? Or how was it like? Man, uh, actually, I mean, we never felt any bad blood from any of the older guys. It was just like, we're not from where they're from. So I guess they didn't know how to approach us to, to help us out, if they did want to help us out, you know? So it was a more of a thing like, well, we're going to keep it going anyway. And we dancing. And we got fans as far as what we do. So... We good, you know. We love y'all music. We gonna still play it as much as they put out, you know. As long as it's good tracks, we gonna play it. Cool. So should we get into some of those tracks, the good tracks? Stop your stuff. <coughs> oh, <well. laughs> he said play some. We got a couple more. Well, hey, let's go back to we got we got a couple couple throwbacks from ninety. What's that? Ninety eight. Like our first release with Dance Mania. Um, yeah. This is my track, motherfucker. <laughs> I did this with with his sampler that I got from him, the the, uh, the Gemini mixer sampler, and I'm just hitting a button and I programmed the beat and like it got put on a record. The first record, actually, and right after that record, they closed down on us. So we came all this far to get on Dance Mania, and they shut down on us, man. So it was like fuck. So we made it. Imagine this. That's how we had to do it. It was crazy. We didn't know nothing about MIDI, none of that. And this uh, Rashad, like this dude, he a master. He, he's a he's a master man when it comes to like beats. Like he always made like just the dopest beats, like all the time. So like I was saying, Dance Mania closed, right? So. Uh, <laughs> We got like an email from from DJ Godfather from Detroit, yeah. and this was like 2002, 2001 really, but 2002. He told us to come down and check him out uh, one weekend. So me, Clint, and this guy went down there, and uh, before we talked business, he took us to the club called The State. Uh, it's, it was a nice club out there at this time, and coming from Chicago, we really didn't see this type of club because at this club it was like Man, it was a all kind of races there you know what I mean like everybody just having a good time white black Mexican 
Asian, didn't matter who you was, you was out there getting on the floor, and this was kind of some of the stuff they was playing when we got there, which changed the game for us too as well. Yeah, they they was playing they was stuff much faster, faster too. I, I think this track actually pitched up, but like they a DJ fast anyway, like they was playing their music way faster than us, and we like, whoa, we play our stuff fast, y'all. And cutting. They was cutting. And they deep. was scratching and cutting, man. man. Like, Chicago DJs, some did it, but not as much as Detroit. I can't even lie. They was killing. Detroit, like this, what y'all making? It's almost the same thing, but they had a more, I want to say, a polished commercial sound to to what they were doing. Like we we just had hood sound, and you know it was minimal, but like they were bringing the, the, the techno sense, aspect into it. More sense, yeah, uh, more rhythms than we did actually. Um, before we actually put out like the juke tracks, he was just letting us know like we we looking for the the Chicago sound like what they were used to like the stuff we were just playing like the ghetto house and we like well we do that but it changed since then you know it changed over time so from ninety nine to two thousand and three when we actually got with the label uh, a lot of stuff changed and we still were making like uh, Chicago stuff I yeah, say footwork actually but footwork. we didn't have a name for yeah, it. yeah we didn't call it footwork back then it was just called tracks at that time. And uh, we let him hear some of them. Uh, I'm going to play one of the ones I let him hear. And he was like, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is not uh, like DJ friendly at all and shit. So you're going to have to switch it up. That Mini Rippleton sample right there. He didn't understand like why the claps off and shit. He's like, nah, you can't, you can't do that. And yeah, and to be truthful, when we out selling like our CDs on the west side of Chicago, we from the south side, so we go to the west side and play this stuff to them. They like, man, it's not house music. What is this? Where's this? Is this rap? We like, nah, it's not rap, man. It's tracks, man. That's what we do on the south side. But it took them a while, and like we sold a couple CDs in their stores, and man, uh, after a couple weeks, man, we were selling out on the west side. They like, we need some more of that uh, footwork. <laughs> for real. And we was like, okay, we got more for you. So terminology, you mentioned Duke before. How did that come about again? Where did the term come from? I played a song. We, it, it came from just one track. Uh, Poncho and uh, Gang Man made back in 98. Let me see you juke. You better. Let me see you juke. You better. Let me see you Like this was getting played on the radio and everything. And I, I think that's how it really kind of got familiar with the people ears to call it juke because it was on the radio and in the radio you know they dictated but they didn't play it on the radio until like two years later though yeah they like 2000 yeah This track right here, a lot of just juke, just people saying juke on the track was like popular then, so that just helped stamp juke on the sound right there because the ghetto house guys they didn't want to even claim this is ghetto house, and the house guys definitely didn't want to claim this house, so we was stuck. We were just out here, just tossed to the side with our own music, and it was cool. I mean, we had a fan base, so it wasn't like we was nobody listened to our music, but as far as the people we wanted to like our music and really. 
show respect to what we, you know, what they did before us. We wanted to keep it going. It's still ghetto house to us, but they like, nah, it's not ghetto house. They didn't accept it as ghetto house. And the word juke, was that popular before that track? Like, did people say that and that's why they put it on the track? Or was it the other way around? Like, like the connection between that sound kinda, and that word? It kind of was. Like, I mean, that's just some Chicago slang. Uh, I don't think so. I think Poncho and them kicked it off. They was the first one saying it. Well, not the first, but the first one to bring it out, put it like right, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So so with that sound, and especially the stuff that you went on to do, like the footwork stuff, you could tell, of, of course, you know, it's in the lineage of house music, but the rhythms are different. Of course, not, you know, straightforward to the floor stuff, more twisted. And you mentioned hip hop before. Was that an influence at that time for you? Like, did you ever listen to any hip hop? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's been an influence from day from one. Day one. Yeah, I mean, from day one. Hip hop and all music that we like. I mean, anything that we, we put in, like what our, our, our parents listen to, or uncles, aunts, whatever we listened to when we were little. Like, once technology started catching up with what we were doing, we were able to manipulate the samples a lot better from, man, just having a tape deck and pitching it up fast and it sound like chipmunks or something like that, or pitching it slow and it sound... So when the technology kept, started keep keeping up with what we were doing, it, it started making sense to the dancers and stuff. So what did you use at that time, like 2000? What, what kind of equipment did you have back then? Man, we still had his same drum machine, the, the, um, the 660. We had that for a long time. We was a JS30, yeah, uh, rolling, JS30 uh, rolling sampler. sampler. And you uh, have to MIDI that together and like do some crazy MIDI stuff with the with the drum machine and the sampler to make it work. It was like kind of hard, but hard, once but we, we mastered it, mastered yeah, it. it was cool. No MPC till 04. Yeah, but uh, our friend Clint had an MPC at this time, so we was at his studio most of the time working on the MPC there, if we didn't do it at the house. Okay. So you used the, the term footwork before. How did that came about? Like, who first come, came up with that word, with that name for that sound? We don't know. No, it's like <laughs> it's, numerous stories it's floating like, I mean, around it's like the, the people. It's like the people, really. Uh, uh, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, people just like, play some footwork, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I bet. So, you know, after you hear that a couple times, it just stuck. Just like Drew, kind of like, you know. Yeah. But we didn't, like, capitalize and say, oh, we're going to call this footwork. No, it wasn't us. So, you could tell that stuff sounded different. Like, was that, like, your intention to do something that sounded different from the other stuff that was out at that time? Or did just from you, you know, you being in Detroit, you listening to other stuff, like... Did it more like just come about, or was it like an intentional thing to do? Well, see, that's the thing. Like when we went to Detroit, um, we were always doing the footwork on the side, but due to the standards that we had set for us, we had to commercialize our shit and like make it radio friendly, DJ friendly. So at that time, we was doing both. Um, footwork was always there for us. That's like like something that I could just go to and just do whatever I want type thing. You know what I mean? Versus like. Uh, you trying to make a hit trying record. to make a hit record and shit. Uh, let me show you for example. Uh, this is like some shit I put out for Detroit after I heard the sound. Versus uh, let me see. what what the full work is. never really make it for anybody to like it but us like there's some the stuff in the house like yeah, man, just... we, we making stuff that we can ride around our kind listen to and play at the parties and stuff
What's this track, man? Like, 05? Yeah, I made this in 05. Um, I'm a big fan of Black Moon, so... Um, um, what was the name of the song? Who Got the Props. Who Got the Props. So I found out who the original person was who made it, and I redid it myself. Uh, let's go. We still keep it traditional. We still keep it traditional. Like we never wanted to like really change it all the way, but Just in certain do it our way. yeah, in certain ways we had to because like the respect from the guys that were doing it before us, like they never really respected us to the to the level we wanted. We just wanted respect, like out of homage, because we looked up to them guys. And it's like, okay, well, you don't want to accept what we got going on. Well, we gonna change it then. It don't matter. So if you talk to a lot of people who are like producers and DJs, it's probably one of the biggest cliches in like the history of dance music. They say like, yeah, I'm a DJ. So I think like a DJ, so I would produce tracks that I would like to play as a DJ. So you also being dancers, did that in any way affect the stuff you produced? Like as in like, this is stuff I want to dance to? Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah, 100%. Like, that's, that's probably where it came from, really, the dancing side of us. You know, because uh, dancers from Chicago really likes bass, claps, like something crazy, you know, something unexpected. And that's what we try to keep up for the people that were still dancing with us or at that time. So when you say still dancing, and you mentioned before when you played some of the early records, there were already battles going on. So when did the, that whole thing like originate? Like the idea of, you know, rolling up as a crew to a club and have like this kind of dance battle in the club? Shit, probably when break dancing came out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then from there, you got the, the house dancers. Then from the house dancers to the ghetto house dancers. It was, it was like different movements, like everybody had, like you know, just the house dance. It's just like this, you know, cool, you know. Then you got the ghetto house dance. They had to do a little something different, you know. Then you get the ghetto house. They more with the feet. So in the late nineties, it started getting real complicated when it come to footwork. And then like now, it's like, man, these kids are amazing. Like they dancing so fast, but at the same time, we make the music so they can slow down and catch their breath, and then come back to going fast. So it's like, it worked out. In terms of house dancers, who were the, who were the ones you, you looked up to? You kind of you know people were talking about the big guys on the house dancing. And it's, it's a number one dude from Chicago. His name Ant Brown. Like he, he the number he, he the guy that really that taught was, us. Too. Yeah, that almost I want to say invented footwork in Chicago as far as modernizing it and making it like with skill and like just going out there and being like yeah, I ain't gonna mess with him. <laughs> yeah, people were scared of him when he came in the club. Straight up. <laughs> He was dancing. Hey, see Ant? I'm like, oh shit. Because <laughs> he will embarrass you and take all the girls. Yeah. Man. It was like, fuck, Ant here. Yeah, that's what it was about back in the day. Just respect. Like, that's all we wanted was respect. It wasn't respect, about no money girls, at all. And that's it. That's all yeah. we cared about. The juice, we called it. Then we'd get a little money, DJ, and that's extras. So, do you want to maybe play some of those YouTube videos that you prepared just to give people an idea of what we're even talking about? Sure, sure. Now this video right here, um, I think this from this this, this from uh, BG's uh, last. Yeah, this is something we used to do like every Sunday for the like last three years. We had like three different spots, so like it gets crazy. Like, and I mean, this is just underground, super underground. This is like no license type stuff we do. So I want you to check the guys out. Along. There we go. We get it some sound. No sound for that. Well. That's weird. No, y'all like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, we, gotta, we gotta have a sound. <laughs> no sound. <laughs> Can we get some? Yeah. Does any of you guys know? We just need a, yeah, it should be. a line out from the headphone. Where is it? 
We just need a, a headphone. It's RCA. Word, word. That's what's up. Talking about underground. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, um, this nah, is just a storefront store that one of our, um, our, our partners rented out. They probably used to sell potatoes out of here or something. Um, pretty much what we try to do is set something for them, for the food workers to have something to do versus, uh, and kids, whoever, um, pretty much, instead of just banging on the streets, smoking, or, you know, selling drugs or whatever, man, because it's crazy out in Chicago, and uh, ain't shit to do, really, but get into trouble, you know? So we felt like, Maybe we have some for these guys to kind of, you know, express themselves in another way, you know, which was pretty cool. Uh, we really didn't get mo no money out of this. This was all for the kids. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Ah, could be it. Stop it. I can't see the arrow. <laughs> Just Sorry, guys. Oh, it's got some value. Oh. <laughs> Wrong one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we need some help. <laughs> Please. So move it to the right, man. I never did this double screen right here. You can't see it on him. No, you can't see it on, on the computer. Right, right. I see it. I see it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I seen it. Right there, right? Right there? Yeah, G, yeah, yeah G. <laughs> Make it a big screen, yeah. That's me DJing right now. All right, we go back some. Hopefully, it don't mess up nothing. Okay, there we go. Is that the string? You too. There you go. Like y'all looking at like two of the like I wanna say the best crews in Chicago. Like they they going at it right now for just for respect right here. Nah, this is for some money. This for money? Yeah, we we did a hundred dollars that night. Wow. Yeah, they was going crazy, that's why. <laughs> and YouTube don't wanna work. That's Rashad on the table. This sucks, man. Hey, you too, man. I guess it's slowing down so y'all could get a second to so think about what you're seeing. <laughs> but you'd want to take some rest too if you dance like this. <laughs> It was loaded. It's fully loaded. Yeah, we had it loaded. I don't know what happened. Maybe go to another video. Yeah, I'm sure. trying another one real quick. I'll get this one. If you can see. Oh, man. Make it back small again. How do I make it back small? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Y'all so smart, man. <laughs> All I do is make tracks. <laughs> Hopefully this one don't mess up. It don't even look like it loaded. Okay, I got this thing. <laughs> this was awesome for like 200. Yeah, this, they, this they got the money, spot. right? That they just showed the money. I 
I wonder if y'all could be the judge and see who's yeah, uh, better, like tell better who's dancers. Better. I wouldn't be dancing like that for money. Y'all notice how the crowd is like real quiet? <laughs> Dude's weak. guys they dance like this all night for like six hours just for yeah, for a little bit of money but it's mostly for the respect and, and the love of footworking As you can see, those guys on the left lost, and the guys on the right got the money. <laughs> so that's just a little example. That's that's how we do. It. That's how we've been doing for the last three years in Chicago. So, in terms of who gets the money, like how does that work? Is that like a sound clash type thing where the crowd gets to decide, or is that like a judging panel? Or we got judges. Work? Yeah, we do. Uh, we do random judges. We do random judges. Um, mostly, uh, we try to get people that's not in the groups, so it'll be favoritism. Um, so. So how often would you put on stuff like that? Like, is that happening on like a weekly basis, yeah, or is that more every monthly? week? It's every week, but like, um, we've been on tour a lot, so we haven't really been doing it. And uh, the spot we had, uh, what happened to the spot? No, they ain't pay their bills. Yeah, they didn't pay their bills. So uh, we we currently looking for a new spot. When we get back, we're gonna try to do something again. Pretty much. So apart from that format, like battles in some more or less random spot, just kids rolling up and dancing. Is there also like a club scene for that in Chicago right now? Like, do you do stuff on a regular basis there as well? Or is it more of a thing well, when you travel abroad and this is kind of the scene there? There is club spots, but uh, we don't, like, you You might see it, but, like, our clubs today is yeah. more like, you might hear this kind of music only for, like, an hour. Because people can't dance and they can't relate to that right. shit. And they get mad, you know? It's like, these motherfuckers over here dancing and shit, you know? And uh, they get mad, <laughs> ain't it? Man. Yeah, they get mad uh, when, when people, like, I don't know. Yeah. Explain it to me. I mean, like, just a perfect example. Like, I was just hanging out for my birthday. You know, I'm older than a lot of these guys, so I'm, I'm just hanging out. And DJ see me, like, oh, spin in the house, happy birthday, woo-woo. And he started playing tracks for, like, two hours. Two hours. I'm like, please, man, stop. You, like, embarrassing me. Like, that's too much for anybody, man. They might not in the club to hear this, man. You know, it's cool that you're showing me love, but, yeah, it only lasts for a certain span in the club. This places like right. this, this, this is where it stay all work, night. All night. You know what I mean? So in terms of like new records, I assume you play a lot of your own stuff. So how many like, do you roll up like every week with like 20 new tracks or is it most, are there like hits in this kind of battle scenario as well? Or like how many new new, new, new tracks you knock out like a week? Countless. <laughs> this dude right here. Yeah, it's countless. <laughs> um, like, I don't like, know. Like 10 per day countless or more like 50 per day countless? Nah, I won't say 50 a day, but like at least five to six a day. At least, at the least. And, uh, like, me and DJ Manny, one of the other little guys we got in the crew, like, me and him would just go back to back all day. All day. And then we'll go play it there. And that's how we test the, sh the, the tracks out. 
you know, we'll play it at the battlegrounds or at the party and see how they respond to it. And we'll know if it's good or bad. So how would you actually approach a track like that? Like, what, what do you start with in terms of production? Like, is that whatever, I don't know, the, the, the hook first, the sample first, or come up with some drums? It kind of really all depends on the, the mood you're in, you know, how you want to do it. Mostly, though, I, if I'm going to do a track with some samples in it, I start with the samples first, cut them up, and work the beat around the samples, you know what I mean? Um, and just take it from there. So with the stuff you release, is that also like a... Um, done in an hour, or do you like spend some more time on the some stuff? Some of it, yeah. yeah. Some of it was like 15 minutes. Some of it was two hours. But see, like a lot of the stuff that we put out, like with Planet Mew, and it's not our choice. It's right? not our choice. They kind of like pick what they want. You know what I mean? So um, the stuff that we did want to put out, like the stuff we worked hard for, you might not hear on Planet Mew. You know, but we we got another little record label coming out. Where we're gonna put most of that stuff out on. So okay, your own one. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, one of our partners is doing it. So, uh, okay. yeah, it should be coming out real soon, Lit City Records. So with that whole Planet Mew thing, I mean, that was kind of, you know, I guess surprising for everybody when that when that came up. When you first heard that there's this, like, this label in, in all the way, you know, in the UK, paying, like, paying interest in what you guys are doing and wanted to put up some stuff, was it like, yeah, great? Or were there any, like, reservations first? Because if you think about the history of, like, dance music, there, like, there were so many labels fucked up by like European labels even all the way back in the 80s with whatever Acid House and then later on with the with the whatever Chicago House stuff so how, what do you think when, when, when Mike or whoever else first approached you? Well uh, I don't think he approached us first I think it was like DJ Nate first like he put out the DJ it was Nate, 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 yeah. Nate Rock and then me uh, and right. pretty much I was uh, blessed and happy that he approached me because I, I really never heard of Planet Moon until he did approach me. And I did my research like, damn, this is what's up, you know. Um, it felt good, you know, to have another whole side of the world hit me up to put out a record. So yeah. I, it was a good feeling for me. What, what's the connection to, like, Nate and, 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 and Rock anyway? Like, is that, like... Do you spend a lot of time with these people? I mean, I assume you know them. Like, I mean, is that like one the, crew? Is that like a completely well, like, different type yeah. of scene? Well, Nate ain't even around. Yeah, I Nate, Nate seen like Nate raps ever. and stuff now. So ever. like, yeah, like Rock a lot of these around. guys, like they really don't participate in the scene as we participate in the scene. Like we've been doing this for 15 years, so it's like it's hard to not be mad. Like I'm not mad at anybody that come up doing what we do, but it's a, a respect issue. Just like how we want to earn our respect. From the guys before us, I just I just want to show it's love. It's not even about the respect. It's like if you're there and you're part of this movement, you should be at, at these parties. Like I can't speak for Rock. He has been there a couple of parties, but for the most part, we never seen DJ Nate ever. And we're not hating or none of that. It's just the truth. Like you know, and you know, have you ever seen DJ Nate at a Footwork? I event? seen. Nah, it wasn't a Footwork event. Exactly. At all. Nah, I seen him somewhere. Never. So um, nobody's mad or nobody's hating, but it's just like. Um, if you're going to be a part of the movement and claim the fame, you should be, like, represented. But I mean, especially with Nate, the music is kind of different anyway. Like, it has more of a whatever hip-hop, hip-hop type twist anyway, right? Yeah, like, Nate music and, like, certain rock tunes, like, our, our style from, like, 2000. 2002. Yeah, like, when we just went crazy. And, like, when we got weird, with Godfather, real he put us in line, like, yo, I can't put out this crazy stuff. So we had to change it up. And for them to get the opportunity to just put out their raw tracks, hey, that's, More power to that's them, cool. That's cool. That's what's up. So in terms of, you said before that you had never heard of Planet Mew before, before they approached you. Like, what's with all the other, like, UK or, like, European rave stuff, like, whatever, the all the, I don't know, like, hardcore stuff, then later jungle, drum and bass. Like, of course, the energy is very similar also, like, almost the... The speed of the records is kind of similar, little little slower, but still. Was there ever an influence? Like, did you know about that stuff, or like, did you pick up like random bits, or was that something you went to? Well, I could say. At all? Was that 07? We went to Seattle. 07. I think it was 08. Yeah, 07, 08. Like, Seattle was like an experience, like that really put us in tune with other music, stuff, and we especially. didn't know it was coming from. Across the water, we thought these guys on the we West Coast Seattle was making it. it. <laughs> yeah, so we like, damn, this is that skateboard music, shit. We like this. Then we, we, you know, we get in touch with people and we find out yeah, what the real out. is, yeah, and we the like, real aha, okay. And we hearing that guys from overseas is like picking up on the style of music that we making, and we like, oh, okay, that's cool. And like the first person I ever heard to like 
to, to openly say it was Addison Groove in the interviews. Like, I listen to Rashad and Spin. And we like, what? Okay. Cool. Yeah, and then from there, we kind of like linked up. So, yeah, shout out to Addison Groove. He was here last week. Yeah, we heard, we heard, we just found out. So, I mean, on a very general level, like, how do you feel about what's happening these days with, like, you know, people all around the world producing stuff that's quite obviously influenced by you stuff? I mean, I'm not going to lie, I think for mo a lot of the people in the room, including me, we're not really up to what you guys were doing. I mean, we're familiar with the name, like Footwork Juke, of course, some of the tracks, but not really familiar with what's going on. And now all of a sudden you have all these kids, like, making juke music or like Duke influence music. How do you feel about that? Like, do you see? I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they show the proper respect behind it. Like, they show more respect than the Chicago it's guys. It's not even on, not even that. Also, they take it and they flip it their own way. Yeah. And that's creative right there. You know, it's not like they just biting it from us. And and it's kind of like flattering, if you will. Yeah, you know? it's very flattering. Uh, we love it, man. And we support it, too. We also play it. So, you know, yeah, I think it's a good thing. That's what's up. How about the older cats from Chicago? Like, I mean, somebody like, I don't know, but Frankie Knuckles, like, would he know the stuff you're doing? Is there any, like, sort of connection there? I mean, you know, with you now getting bigger bookings and playing festivals, whatever, I assume you cross paths with these people too, like, right? Not I ain't really. seen Frankie Knuckles. Um, oh. oh, man, I can't even think of the guy. Um, it was it was one guy. Um, man, he was an old school cat. He was actually in Chicago and trying to, like, lock down all the high schools and, like, representing Juke. But, like, he from House. And like he never played a part in Juke. I can't think of his name right now, bro. He was he was a big house that ghetto. From and Chicago. Yeah, from Chicago. And he was really trying to capitalize, like throwing juke parties at high schools and like he never had nothing to do with Juke at all. <laughs> That's the crazy stuff we go through in Chicago though. Have you ever met like other people around the world to do that kind of stuff? I, I think there's like a bit of a scene in Paris and of course like the UK whole UK approach to it to kind of edit their own uh, UK way of doing bass music and that whole tradition of whatever coming from garage and, and jungle and all these things. Like, is there any other like, like for some reason, like a scene anywhere else in the world where they really do the stuff like you do it? Oh yeah, uh, Paris. We got the uh, booty call booty crew call out records, there. Uh, Captain Cadillac, uh, Marvin Pimp. Um, yeah. When we was in The Hague, they got a uh, Juke Squad. Rivers called area, Juke area Squad. Juke Squad, which was crazy. Uh, we wasn't expecting that, but they, they got a nice little community and they, they doing it just kind of like how we doing it, but they in their own little way. Yeah, you know? I think it was some Japanese guys, because uh, I know they got some dance crews out there. Like, the dancers touched the other side of the water first, so, like, they got a chance to spread the seed of the dancing first. And it's like, for the for all the dancers that picked up on what they were doing, they had to find the music to do it to. So, it worked hand in hand, and, like, man, we just blessed to have an opportunity to, to spread our music, like, for real. Did your sound or like even like your approach to producing music change at all? Like with you touring in the last two years and like getting whatever all these bookings are all around the world and playing in these sorts of club scenarios, did that change your way of producing at all? Uh, not producing, not. but what we'll play. Like yeah. it's certain stuff we know that, man, they might not be ready for this. We're going to give them some sort of techno or four to the floor. And then in certain places, they just want to hear footwork. And we like, all right, cool. We can Chicago it out. Yeah, a lot of a lot of places like are starting to ask for more of the footwork now, and which is kind of shocking because I thought they wouldn't be ready for it. But like they come up to us and, and they got the phone and they play this, you know, I'm like damn, they know the name of it, and anything. All right, cool. So I kind of feel like I'm at home when I'm going to these places now, like London and everywhere, man. It's it's really cool, man, and we just love it and enjoying it. It's cool. It's crazy. Good. So maybe we could open it up to questions at this stage. Does anybody have any questions here? Do we have a mic? We don't have a mic. Um, I read in an interview with Mike Paradinas that some tracks that he wanted to release of yours he couldn't find or you guys couldn't find, so he had to rip the YouTube. Nah, that wasn't nah, that nah, was nah, nah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, Mike didn't hit me up. That's what it was. No okay. disrespect to Mike. If you're out there, Mike, what up? But... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a misunderstanding with communication. That's all that was. And okay. what he did was just took it off YouTube. Yep. Okay. A lot of the tracks that he's got, he's took off YouTube. Okay. Not yeah. just ours. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he said he mastered them. And then yeah. it, sounded, it sounded pretty good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I just know that he took them off YouTube and he could have just hit me up. You know, <laughs> right. I could have gave him a 320 version. Still rocking. Mike, 
There's another one over there. So um, I guess he kind of touched on this for, for a second, but like since there is like a, a, you know, it's kind of like a movement now and there's a, there's a lot of people that are using like juke inspired sounds. It's not necessarily even catered towards the dance floor. Do you find yourself like you could be a little more free with it? Like you don't have to like just make music for the parties. Like you can like make some super weird shit or something that you would never actually play at a party. Because definitely, people like people, definitely. you know, people want to hear that now, you know, and definitely that's why I was telling him earlier, like that's that was like the thing we can go to just to like express ourselves yeah. and like do whatever we want. It's no, it's no limits into this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can do whatever you want, and uh, yeah. So, right? Yeah, that's what I do. Like, I mean, everybody else I've been listening to kind of like do their own thing, and that's what that's the beauty of it, really. Right, being you know, original, being and, original, creative. You know, we it. all take elements from other music. I mean, nobody that's made music. the first note or anything in here so like it's been around for hundred thousands of years so like everybody's just taking pieces of music and, and and forming it to make their own so i mean i feel this it's all important and and with juke and footwork i feel it's like no boundaries because we could touch on any aspect of music like from jazz to soul rock classical we could throw all them elements in there and just throw some bass behind that shit. <laughs> for real you know, not not no, not on no shitty way, but in a, in a way, if you do it right and correct, I mean, that's what anything you do. It ain't what you do, but how you do it. Yeah. You guys have you guys uh get into like lower tempos anymore? You ever like fuck around in like the you know like one forty one thirty or like yeah. one thirty yeah, range, like yeah. back down to house. Yeah, we got a lot of that coming out too. Uh, yeah. Same kind of style, but just slower. So cool. Uh, that should be hitting out next year, nice. in January. Hi, I wanted to, two things really. First off, if we can hear some of your n new music that you're doing. But secondly, I just wondered like if there's any girls making Duke or involved in the scene at all. I mean, like I've seen the, the clips of the girls hip rolling, but is there any other place for kind of females in Duke aside from that? Of course. Oh, um, yeah. We got DJ Jenna Rush, uh, Jay Lynn coming out on Bangs and Works too. Nightwave, she was making Nightwave over no. there. Uh, and Guzu and Guzu right here. Man. Uh, man, it's, yeah. That's what we want. We want we, more people to be involved, yeah. man, and just do their thing. Uh, yeah, it's definitely girls dancing, too. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's like a male thing here. Uh, nothing like that. If you got it, you got it. And uh, maybe some new tunes coming here? Yeah, we was gonna close, yeah, out, gonna a close set, out with a mix. Uh, with a mix. They asked us to do a mix, so we was gonna do a mix of all the new stuff. Right, should we do it now? Or? No more questions. Anybody? No more questions. I'm curious if anybody, anybody else is else? curious. Anybody? Anybody? I'm. I'm actually just wondering if you ever had access or were listening to music coming from Europe, the UK, or or Not, a, a, any other tunes coming from somewhere else. Yeah, that's that's just as of lately. Like like I was saying when we went to Seattle, that was like our first experience, like hearing dubstep. dubstep, and it was like the proper way to hear it, like on bass, your whole Great. back, just what shit, what is this? I yeah. need to know what this is. This made me feel like where I'm from, you know, it's music, it's a feeling you, when you when you hear that music. So like, I want to say the last, yeah, since 07, 08, like four or five years, we've been, we've been dibbling, dabbling, putting our ears out there. Yeah, but not till then though, though, you know, so before no, we wasn't hip to none of the stuff that was going on. What about um, like younger producers in Chicago, like also making footwork, like who's coming up? Wow. DJ Earl from Ghetto Tex, DJ, DJ Manny, Manny, Ghetto Tex. Uh, who else we got out I mean, there? Uh, I mean, uh, just to say, it don't got nothing really to do with age. If if you started, you, you could be 30 years old and start, you still young when it comes to the, to producing. So, I mean, we got, it's a lot of guys. It's a lot man. of guys. It ain't even just guys in our it's, crew. Uh, yeah. We got Young Smoke coming out on Bangs and Works, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jay Lynn. Uh, I already said that. All right, so, <laughs> so we've, we, like... The issue, of the issue of respect the issue of respect has uh, come up a, f a few times. Like, do you feel like you're earning it back home a little bit? Like, 
Is it kind of, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, uh, the whole little, like, you talking about, like, ghetto text versus BOTC type just, thing? I mean, just, like, Respect. just in general, I mean, like, for younger cats or whatever, dudes still stuck in Chicago, you guys have been able to, like, are one of the only few that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the, well, some of the only guys that have been able to kind of, like, branch out and leave Chicago. You, know, you guys True. are, like, playing all over the place, you know? Like the respect, really, we always had the respect. As far as like our sound goes, Chicago, they always represented for us. Um, of course, you got haters, but uh, yeah, I was, just gonna, I was gonna say that next. It never knocked us down or nothing. That shit kind of motivated that's us. That's forever. That's, that's Chicago. That's, that's, that's Chicago. You know, it's home of the haters. So uh, <laughs> we used to that. So other than that, no, nah, Chicago's always been standing by our side, and probably always will. I hope. Yeah, as far so, as the people go, the like the people. Not the, Not the city. corporations or the, <laughs> With the people. You know, the radio right. stations and then the people, they stand by us, and that's what we do it for. And uh, production wise, like, there's a lot of sampling and samples. What about since? You've been like. Yeah, we got tracks for since. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, because, uh, you know, most record labels don't want us to, like, sample certain shit. Well, you got to get a copy written or master. I mean, I master. You yeah, get a clearance. Uh, so yeah, we do got tracks, uh, original tracks as well, but with no samples. What would you use to make that one track? Actually, <laughs> it's called. Well, you know what? I have. I, I don't even think it's the the final title. iPod twelve or so, iPod something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Crazy is little. reasons in my MPC. Word. It's not out yet though, right? It's like it's on the new record. Uh, it's coming out um, in January. Lit City Tech Word. Life Volume One. Well, I call it iPod though. Yep. I have a quick question. Um, so you guys like really had people to look up to, but like no one really like brought you in or like whatever. So like for the for the younger producers and stuff, like like wh were you? Do they come to your house and use your MPC or like? I'm just curious about that. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. Pretty much, they be in the studio with us, but uh, when they're not, they they use Fruity Loops. Yeah, so man. they work off Fruity Loops. Uh, matter of fact. Uh, Earl and Manny will be on tour out here next next month. With well, some this dancers. month. It's November, well, November yeah. now, this month, later on this month. So younger guys are coming up too, and they'll be touring, and everything's going good. So hopefully uh, we'll get more younger cats to come out too in the future. Yeah, that's up to them, though. We too old to be hanging with shorties. <laughs> we don't got patience. <laughs> All right, another question. Um, has uh, since uh, since like uh, the music has taken off and populated a lot. Has it has the the dancing scene in Chicago actually gotten bigger? There are a lot. Is it is it more dancers, more people going to the to the footwork events? Like, do you see just bigger crowds? Like, or is it always like it's still just like kind of like a small community type of thing? No, nah, it, it it got bigger, but uh, it's like over the couple of years, some people quit. Some people right. come back. Some people, you know, you so got new, uh, people new that groups. Join. It's always new groups coming out and trying. Yeah, it, it gets bigger. Yeah, because I mean, Sum now, it all up. now there's like it more bigger. international attention and stuff, and like YouTube clips are like getting getting watched all over the world. So like, I'm wondering if people it, it like look at that and they're like, oh yeah, I, I can yeah, see it that. definitely got bigger. Yeah, um, it, it's just up to us guys like us to to keep to keep the, the parties going. going. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of hard when you're dealing with real life when you got kids or or your girl. And life, you know, you gotta work, you gotta make money. If your your music ain't making money for you, you gotta work, you gotta do something. So to stay out the streets and all that, I make sure that I make my music work for me. And somehow, somewhere, I'm gonna be DJing every week. I'm gonna be making tracks and, and making it happen. But yeah, we we gotta keep the events going. Like it's it's up to us to really do it. You know, nobody else comes to Chicago and really does the events. And if they do do it, they really cheap. The kids, you know, they cheat them out their money. Like it's been done years and years over. Once, once something get popular, they they see it coming. And it's like and they're money. trying to capitalize over it. Yeah. And uh, we're not here to like take the money from the kids. That's the whole point. Right. Like the money that they pay, it goes back to them for the whoever wins the battle. Yeah, yeah. And it's only five dollars. Yeah, five dollars to get in, and then you add that up. <laughs> and it's it like you know, more. times two hundred people, whatever that you know, maybe. In terms of like the more established industry, like you know, with a lot of these like new dance music styles that kind of pop up, they it's just a natural thing for them to sort of somewhat cross over to the mainstream. So if you see so many people, whatever, rapping over dubstep beats now, like Jay Z, Kanye, they they had to have a dubstep beat in a way. It's kind of you know predictable. Is that something that would you know? Is that something that you would like to do? As in like 
whatever produce the next Kanye record, something like that. Hell oh, yeah, man, that'd I be would great. love to. <laughs> you know? yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm kind of surprised because there's not even you're not even doing too many remixes. Like, there's a couple and stuff, but like, I would expect you know, like shit, lots of people just asking you for remixes and stuff. Uh, we get we get a lot of like new artists, like you know, people that just like under the radar, but they they blowing They're up, blowing up at and the it's same like, time. Yeah, we we take a, attention to that because we 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 them same guys. Like we 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 had to stay in the background for a long time, and I mean, we still on our way up. You know, so it's like I root for them guys. I root for the underdogs. I wanna, I wanna just get them a track. You know, I mean, all right, well, you can't afford it, man, but I see the potential in you. So, man, this this could turn into a hit record or, or whatever. Just being successful, just making something successful and not a failure. In terms of like producing other music, you touched on that before re briefly. Like, if you had, you know, it's just maybe a natural thing for an artist to do at some point to do an album or something like that. Is that something that? You know, like complete. Of course, all these tracks are made for like the club battles, dancing. Even if they are a little slower, but is that something you could see yourself doing? Like, just forget about all that and just sit down and produce an album or something like that. I definitely can see myself doing that. That's what I kind of want to do. Like, once I get done with this, I want to move on to something else. Um, hopefully, I get that opportunity. I wish one of these rappers would hit me up already. You know, <laughs> I've been waiting on Ludacris for like three years already. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real though, it'd be dope if I could like produce for one of the rappers or R&B sing anybody. Yeah, it'd be. That's like yeah, instead that. of like stealing their track, like sampling them, yeah, like really get them to come in. You gotta say one line, man. That's it, man. Or well, just send it to me, email it, man. Thank you. Bless you. Yeah. In terms of in terms of like this whole you know scene like picking up and people paying attention, do you? As like the originators of this whole movement, do you sometimes feel like you have the responsibility to also like slow it down in a way? Because a lot of these things, you know, they get written by media. Like everybody had their footwork article, like all the magazines did that, and um, some whatever guys might have a footwork remix on their B side or iTunes bonus or whatever. So do you sometimes feel like you have to slow it down a little just to keep kind of make it more consistent and also to be able to be around in, in years to come? I mean, really, I feel like we don't got enough releases out. Like, we got so many tracks. Like, I just want to put the music out and let the people hear it. But at the same time, yeah, we don't want it to get commercialized and people just like, oh, fuck Juke, you know? I mean, this, we do this, this is our life. Like, this is our life. Juke life, tech life. This is our life. For real, half a majority of my life I've been DJing and producing, so it's my life. I don't actually remember what I was gonna ask. <laughs> oh yeah, I was. Um, there was a moment when Juke was popping off, like in early 2000, because there was a moment I think where they were trying to kind of like take it to the next step, because it, it stayed like a Chicago, like even when it was big, it was like big for us, but not big for anybody else. I mean, I didn't know like, like I didn't know, you know, I knew it was a Chicago thing, but I didn't know it was like a Chicago thing. Like I left, when I left Chicago and I would. That's when you noticed that. That's when I was like, juke, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, what? Like, yeah, juke, you know, 150, 140. Like, they're like, what are you talking? Like, people had no idea. And this was just like a couple years ago. Um, but th wasn't there a moment when Gatman, I think, got asked to do a remix for like, who was it? Like it was he did a remix for he Beyonce. Did, he did do a remix like for a juke, Beyonce. Like a juke, like yeah, a juke remix, right? Official juke uh, remix for Beyonce. Came out on Columbia Records. Uh, check up on that shit. Check that's about, that's about as big as like it probably got, like as much like potential commercial like appeal as it got, right? Or like whatever. That was at the apex of that. Yeah. Yeah. At that yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. At that time. Yeah. It just didn't get no promotion. Like, I guess right. a lot of people didn't even know that track came out. To take these like regional dance music styles and like oh like you just need you need it like. You need it to to take it to like the next level. You always need the next level. You know, commercially, I'm speaking like you just need a vocalist. You just like co-sign it, basically. You know, pretty much. Yeah, like yeah, that's what we're waiting on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like some like some instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like going back to what you're saying, like instead of like sampling like some original, like doing like an original juke footwork inspired like vocal track with like a rapper or like a singer or something like that. That'd be dope. Yeah, that's what we're waiting on, man. Get on Soldier Boy is somebody. It's perfect, dude. right? Like to get on the juke track, like. And spread the word, like, for real. What happened to the whole Detroit connection? I mean, you mentioned before that you went there and kind of also went inspired by what was going on there at the time. So, w like, they had their JIT thing going on, and, you know, it's not that far from Chicago, so I'm kind of, why isn't there more of a connection? It's all, The connection was always there for the last 20 years, but it seemed to have kind of died with this thing. 
I don't know. Like, um, my connection's still strong with Detroit. I still talk to the same people and fuck with them. Um, Chicago and Detroit, um, that it was a kind of like a beef with Chicago and Detroit. Uh, and with the rappers. With the rappers. Raps um, with the house, too. Like, who started house? Yeah. Uh, who started techno first? But I never had that problem with any of the guys from Detroit. So, like, I never looked at that beef anyway. And we were in Detroit almost from, like, 2002 to, like, 2008, every year for Denf. So, like, uh, I don't know why the connection fell off, to tell you the truth, but my connection, our connection still there with Detroit. This is still the dancing scene in Detroit? I'm not even sure, bro. I, I last time I heard about Detroit dancing was Chicago versus Detroit, and that was oh eight oh eight, and that was the last time I was out there. So I don't know. Uh, something I need to check up on, but to my knowledge, I don't know. I think so. I hope so. Yeah, gas been too high to keep riding back and forth from Detroit to Chicago too. <laughs> Straight up. 